Today, we're going into the home of one of my clients and I'm gonna be surprising her with something big. While we transform her closet, I'm gonna be sharing with you seven mistakes that you should avoid. Don't worry, I've made all of these mistakes myself. So don't feel bad if you've made these mistakes. And I'm gonna share with you seven tips and tricks to help you maintain all the sweet progress that you have made. And of course, I'm gonna show you the end result of this amazing closet transformation. I'm gonna share with you the time it took me to do it and five things I would have done differently in this project. Everything that I talk about here today will be linked in that description box below. Everything was done on a budget and it is not cheap stuff, my friend, like some shoe organizers that break from the Dollar Tree and some of the bins that crack. Don't get me wrong, I love the Dollar Tree, but for longevity, when it comes to high touch items in your closet, they haven't proven to hold up the best. And I'm not gonna show you some weird hack that you're never actually going to use that looks gaudy and, and very disgusting <laughs> in your closet and you're like, why would anyone do that? You think for a second, yes, ooh, that is quite interesting. But in reality, you're never gonna do that. You're gonna do the things that I show you here today. Enough talking, let's make some magic happen, shall we? It's almost 9.30 a.m. as we start this project. There are just four things that my client requested for this particular project. Number one, she wants to be able to see her floor when she walks in her closet. Number two, she also wants to be able to see all of her items. However, I cannot magically create more square footage in a closet, so I'm gonna show you some clever ways to tackle that. And number three, my client loves jackets and shackets. Oh, so cute. She wants to easily be able to access them on an everyday basis. And number four, she wants her work clothes, her home clothes, and her workout clothes all separated so that she knows exactly where she needs to go to get which items, depending upon what fantastic thing she was doing that day. And by the way, she is fantastic. Number one, not refreshing enough, otherwise known as the decluttering process. I prefer refresh, it sounds like, yes, I'm refreshing my home, rather than I'm, I'm losing something of potential or perceived value. Sometimes you gotta trick your mind. Here's another little trick that I have, it does take some self-control, but only buy as many hangers for the items that you currently have. If your closet is like busting at the seams and filled to the max, don't buy more hangers. You get where I'm going with that? Because then you have places to hang stuff and like shove it into the, in your clothes. They're like, help me, they can't breathe. In the space in the closet. So if you have ran out of a hanger, my friend, then it is time to part with something else. These are the things that my client was able to refresh. We have a very large bag filled with lots and lots of shoes. I know those can be hard to part with. And then she also has this big bin here filled with clothing. I am very impressed with this. In my home, I always have a Dollar Tree donation basket ready and available for me to put items in that no longer need to take up space within my home. Mistake number two, floor clutter. Yes, when we start busting at the seams up top and mid-level here, we start moving to the floor and pretty soon you can't shut your door or get out your door. There are three big categories of things that were taking up space on my client's floor. We have all of these shackets and jackets that fell off the wall and then all of these overstock accessories. And then, oh, the shoes. She has the cutest shoes ever, may I say, but they are taking up a ton of floor space along with the workout attire that you see in the bins. What is one of the first things that you see when you walk into a bedroom? the bed, right? And if it's made, your bedroom automatically looks more clean and tidy. And if it's unmade, well then it all looks like a mess. So hangers can serve that same function. Oh, what a difference that matching hangers can make in a closet. Just look at this. It looks like a jumbled mess. No judgment here. I've been in this situation myself, but you can see as you look into the closet, there's just no cohesion. Your eye goes right towards hanger level. My client did not want velvet hangers because she's not able to get the things and garments off her hangers as quickly. And I can totally agree with that one. So these hangers here from Amazon are amazing, great quality. The top spins, which is what you want. You don't have to worry if you're putting your shirt on the hanger right. You can switch it when you are hanging it up. I don't know about you, but when there's a lot of visual clutter in my home, my mind gets very busy and preoccupied with all the things around me. So I have some sneaky ways to reduce that. 
Getting rid of visual clutter, this is something we can do easily and quickly. And in fact, this is the first thing that I tackled with this closet. Also here on the floor with the jeans, with the jewelry, the perfumes, and all the accessories are just a few examples of the visual clutter that you can see. We got purses on the top shelf. We have hats mixed smashed here. We have lots and lots of swimsuits. Sometimes it's easier just to like hide stuff in bins like, oh, I'll get to that later. But really later never comes because by the end of the day, you like want to put your feet up, get a pint of that coffee ice cream. That's my, mm -hmm, I like that. That the random items in the bins never get their home. If an item deserved to come into your home, will it deserve to have a home within your home? Here are just a few examples of some of the homeless items in my client's closet. We have shoes, there was a back massager that you saw, these coats and jackets, and some cleaning supplies. I'm gonna show you some clever ways to organize these items. You know when you're in the grocery store, where do they put like the items they really want you to buy? Where do they put them? Eye level, yeah, we're trained to look eye level, but when it comes to organizing your closet, here's what you wanna do. If you ever see items at the very bottom of the shelves or the very top of the shelves, well, those vendors didn't pay a good hot dollar to get their items that are right here, front and center. Here are some places that we could maximize that vertical space in this closet. These shoes, see this top shelf right here. We have all of this open space that we could utilize even better on top of these shelves. Also this dresser area, see this open space that could better be utilized? Oh yes. And the number one mistake when it comes to organizing your closet is taking too big of bites. And what I mean by that is this, you plan Saturday, you're like, I'm gonna organize this entire closet, I'm gonna attack it, and then things come up on Saturday, like baseball games, and your power went out in your house, by the way, that actually did just happen, or your car broke down, or your girlfriend called, and her boyfriend broke up with her. And you'd rather do all those things than sit in your closet by yourself trying to figure out where the watch goes, and the pants go, and your panties go. I know, I know how it goes. So in my world, and in my client's world, what I teach them is a refreshed, mindset. I mean, you don't have to say it like that, but refresh mindset. Every day is an opportunity to refresh and give your items new homes. I'm gonna show you a couple areas that should require their own undivided attention. The shoes and the jeans. These are some bigger category items, meaning she has a lot of them within this category. I would just take a Saturday and focus on organizing all the pants or maybe just all the shoes on a Sunday afternoon or maybe finding homes for hats and scarves. That one would go pretty quickly. And then the purses. So start big and work your way up. Let's talk about seven tips and tricks that you can use when it comes to organizing your closet and maintaining it. The best one is to get creative. See things with new eyes like that, like this. This is not a mouse. This is a massager. Yes, yes it is. You get where I'm going with that. You may have seen this Walmart bookshelf or cube organizer in some of my other videos because it is that good when it comes to organizing your closet. And how about some thrifted items? I love these. Look at the price point on some of this. This beautiful jewelry organizer, just $3. Anytime I can find a wooden basket, $3.99 on this one or $4.99 on this wicker basket, I grab them. Or how about some clearance here at Home Goods? I got this basket for just $6 and the quality on it is amazing. I always check the end caps of any store Target or Walmart, oftentimes you'll find some lower priced items that would serve a great purpose in your home when it comes to organizing. These large bins are amazing. Typically people would use them in their pantry or their kitchen, but I love using them in closets. And look at these cube organizer bins. They are such high quality and I love the leather handle detail because you're gonna be pulling these bins in and out. So you want high quality when it comes to these bins, not those cheaper ones that you find at the Dollar Tree, sometimes even at Walmart. Go for it when it comes to bins. Pay a little bit extra because you're going to save yourself money in the long run. But look how nice and organized this is. I have just created so much more space. I also actually flipped the shirts around so that I had more space above this cube organizer. And look at these dresses right here. I'm going to show you something in just a second. You know I love the Dollar Tree. I've made lots of videos on it. But some things, especially high touch items in your closet, need durability. I can't tell you how many cracked bins that I bought from the Dollar Tree. Maybe it's just because I have four children and six people in this house, but those bins often crack for me. 
I love these large bins from Walmart. I come back to them time and time again for all spaces within your home, but I love them in a closet because they are clear. You can see the contents inside so you can easily find the things that you want, which is something that my client wanted. And you could see there on the picture, it actually showed this in your pantry. But again, we gotta get creative when it comes to organizing our spaces. Now you're gonna see here when I fold these jeans, I fold them about four times and I can fit around eight jeans in just one of these large bins. You could do this with shirts, you could do this with sandals and shoes if you just wanted to stack them vertically, you could do this with scarves, hats, you name it, but in this particular project, it was perfect for all of her jeans. Oh my goodness, this is looking so much better already and we've just done two things, let me show you. Organized all the pants so she can actually find them much better when they're stacked vertically like this rather than horizontally where they're more likely then to tip over on your shelving. Oh, I cannot wait, more goodness to come. If there's something that you touch on an everyday basis, make sure that it is easily accessible for you. So for example, my coffee flavored ice cream is like front and center in my freezer. Now it's not buried in the back of the freezer that I have to dig around and find it to get to it. Although that might be a helpful solution if I'm trying to not eat ice cream every single night, but you get the point. This was a priority request from my client. She wanted easy access to the things that she uses on an everyday basis, which are her jackets and shackets. So I needed a coat rack slash organizer that had lots and lots of hooks. So I found this high quality one and affordable one on Amazon and look at all the things that I was able to hang on here. And she can easily switch them out as needed. Have you ever woke up one day and you look around your house and you say, oh my word, how did this get like, like a tornado went off? How did this happen? And we get busy in our lives and then the things just start accumulating and building up and then one day you wake up and you're like, oh, this is overwhelming. And then you're like, I'll do it tomorrow. Ugh, I've done that plenty of times. Well, after this video, my friend, you are going to have fresh eyes for your home. It's like you went, ha, ha, put some Windex on there and cleaned it off, yeah. I needed to take care of all this clutter on the top shelf. So these bins that you might have seen earlier, I utilized them. So rather than putting jeans and workout gear inside, I thought these bins would be perfect to house the cleaning supplies and the massager and some scarves and hats that she doesn't access on an everyday basis. So everything is grouped accordingly so that she knows where to find things. A great way to save space in your closet and really utilize it is to fold things or hang things in ways that you maybe have never thought of before. So rather than taking up precious real estate on this dresser with the jewelry, I decided to get a jewelry organizer so that again, she could access that vertical space and she can easily see and access all of her items. And it looks so cute and organized. I'm loving this. I freed up that space here in the corner so now I can better utilize all the other things on the dresser in this belt hanger. Yeah, this is actually from the Dollar Tree. I love this because you can easily get the belts on and off, meaning you don't have to take off one belt in order to get to the next belt for just $1.25. This was a steal of a deal and it looks perfect inside of her closet. How about these pants? I got this pants organizer and actually it's holding her skirts from Amazon, but again, utilizing that vertical space rather than the horizontal space. And she had the perfect amount of skirts for me to hang right here. Now everything is grouped and organized very well. How about those leggings? Yes, one fun way I love to organize workout leggings is rolling them. It makes it so fast and easy to put away. I was able to put all of these in this bin, minus two of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set these ones on top. All the workout stuff is organized in these larger bins and I was able to eliminate some of these storage solutions. With this method, I've actually created more space on this shelf. You can see right here, what are we gonna do with that? Stay tuned, we will see. My client was not a big fan of bins, however, because they're clear and she can see, look at how nice and organized these jeans are. She can easily put them in, grab them when she needs them. Here's the before of the closet with the mismatched hangers. This is gonna be an amazing transformation. Now look at them. I have not put any more clothes or taken any clothes away. The hangers are all cohesive. It creates such a beautiful look. And they're hangers that she can easily get clothes on and off. This looks perfect. Do you have a lot of something like one particular item in your home? For example, my pantry, the coffee cups are the space 
stealers and I'm quite attached to them so there's that. But we got to identify those space stealers and conquer them in some way, shape or form. You don't have to get rid of them but, but we need to do something about them. All this workout gear was stealing space on the floor and making things look more cluttered and the shackets that had fallen down and the accessories on the floor taking up all of that real estate just making things look more cluttered. And the shoes, this is the biggest category of them all. How am I going to tackle these shoes? Well, I'm going to share with you. I actually got rid of one shoe organizer. Look at how great this looks. Amazing. Clear. You can think better. You can find things better. You can really utilize and cherish the things within your closet. I use that top shelf to organize boots. These bins, rather than the workout gear, I organize the miscellaneous supplies, if you will. The hangers look so nice and organized, and I put the boots up high because it is summer, so she doesn't need to grab them as quickly. So I'm thinking about form and function. Here are the clear bins. I put all of the pants in here. Here's where all the workout gear is going to reside. I had a few extra shoes, so I put all the white ones in this bin, stacking them vertically again so you could put more shoes in there and then easily see what's inside. How about all of this beautiful perfume here? Now you can really appreciate it. And inside this cover used to house all of her pajamas. And the best hack of all is to change it up. Let me know in the comments box below if you as a kid would ever rearrange your bedroom. You know, you put your bed here, you put your dresser here one night, you're up to like midnight and then you do that and you feel awesome. Sometimes you just gotta change it up. I know oftentimes you put something in a place in your home and it just stays there, but it doesn't need to stay there because it doesn't function well for you. So just because an item lands in a spot doesn't mean it needs to stay there. I needed to change it up when it came to the shoes because I think all of those shoe organizers on the floor were just taking up a lot of visual clutter. And I wanted to put the boots up high because it looks oh so beautiful and pretty and I just wanted that floor space to look cleaner. And I really wanted to hide all these excess supplies, so this was great. Also, this laundry basket was in a different direction in the closet, so I slid it in here to create more space. And in order to do that, I need to get clever when it came to hanging these dresses, otherwise this would not be possible, so a great way to to do that is to actually hang your dresses over the hanger rather than hanging them from the straps and with gravity it can stretch them out this jewelry organizer another great way to save on space is access your wall if at all possible and you can see everything is so nice and organized this also gives her liberty to not be as organized and survey says the time is 1 35 and i had one additional person helping me so here are five things that i would do differently in my client's closet don't get me wrong it looks beautiful this is an excellent starting point for her to build off of but because of time constraints and other things I have to stop myself otherwise like I'd be at her house every day oh let's fix this let's fix that I mean I, I'd like that's what happens it's never ending I do it in my own home too that's why I started a business where I go into people's homes so that I can get out of my home and do other people's homes because I love the satisfaction of helping people the first thing that I would have done is gotten some shelf dividers. There are two sets of shelf dividers that you can buy. One are acrylic shelf dividers. I have these in my home. I love them. I have them in my side of the closet and I also have them on my husband's side of the closet. Just makes everything look really nice and fancy. But what if you have wire shelving? Yes, there are some amazing products on Amazon that are highly rated. I would have used these for her jeans. For me, the bins are not visually appealing. They work, they function, they serve their purpose, but I would have liked some shelf dividers. The second thing that I would do differently, well, the product got lost in transit, so that's what happened and I wasn't able to get them in time and put them together, but our shoe box organizers. Because she has so many shoes and lives in a multi-climate season, she has a lot of them. She has boots and sandals and dress-up shoes and all the fun things. So I would have used these shoe boxes on the top of one of her shelves to organize those shoes that she doesn't access on as frequent of a basis. And I would have put the shoes that she accesses on a regular basis in a different spot we'll get to here in just a minute. I would have taken those shoes out of the bins and then used those bins for some other things, maybe some pants, maybe a free space. Imagine that in a closet. The the third thing that I would do differently is put a different dresser in this closet because we really want to access that vertical space. So I would have put something that is higher in there and there are deeper, more drawers so that we could put the pajamas in there, we could put different clothing in there, we could put, I don't know, things from the bins in there. In fact, if we organize this closet, I probably could have done away with the big bin from Walmart. Although, I don't know, there's still quite a lot of product that I would need to work with, but we would have more choices. And in those dresser drawers, I would have used these dividers to keep 
keep everything organized and clean. You can see here in my two and a half year old's dresser drawer, we have this divided between socks and swimsuits. So I can better utilize the space within the drawer and it's so easy, you just pull this up to adjust it and it has a nice pad on the side so it's not gonna scratch or damage anything within your dresser drawer. And in my client's closet, she had a lot of overflow products or back stock products, beauty products, things not really related to your closet. So I actually would have moved those to underneath her bathroom sink. Now I didn't look under her bathroom sink. I wasn't ready to tackle that project at that point, but I would have moved those items and I would have gotten a vertical organizer. Amazon has two that are awesome because they can work with your plumbing that is underneath your sink to really maximize that space. So get the beauty products out of the closet, put them in the bathroom, so then you have some more space within your closet. And the fifth thing that I would have done differently, she has this really beautiful mirror on the back of her closet door. However, there are some amazing shoe organizers that you can use for the back of the door. And instead, I would have taken that mirror or a different mirror, I'm gonna show you in just a second, and put it against the wall where she had a picture. Here's the mirror, it's currently on sale, but it comes in different sizes and colors. I love the sleek look. This is my workout area where I actually film my fitness videos for Elite Fit with Andrew Jean, but you can also hang this. You can extend it like this. You can set it against the wall like you can see here in my master bedroom. I love these. They're awesome. They're durable. I move it around as needed. I would buy this mirror time and time again because of the versatility. So we could take some of those shoes out of the bins and we can actually put them on the back of the door and it would make it easier for her to access the shoes on the back of the door rather than pulling out the bin and then like kind of of having to sift through the shoes that are in the bin. They'd be right there, the ones that she wears on an everyday basis. And the one that I love from Amazon actually houses 36 pairs of shoes. So the shoe organizer that she had on the floor, we could actually have done away with and even cleaned up more floor space. Also, the shoe organizer is fabulous. It has a patented design. It doesn't look cheap like some of those pocket ones that you typically see on the back of doors that break and rip. This one is awesome. So all of these different things that I would have done would have allowed me to move things up higher. But again, it is a beautiful closet transformation. All right, let's get a really good before of this closet the transformation so that we can remember all the progress that was made in this space. And here is the after. So the big surprise for my client is I did this absolutely free for her. My time and all the products that I use. And the reason that I'm able to do this from time to time is because of your viewership and your support of this YouTube channel. So for those of you that continue to watch, that give this a thumbs up, that share this out, that give super thanks, it allows me to share that goodness that you pass on to me and give it to other people. See, the goodness just circulates around and around. So I just wanna say thank you so much for continuing to support this channel and sharing it out. Have you signed up for my free weekly newsletter? Don't worry, I'm not gonna be selling you anything. It's just a way for me to connect with you and let you know when I do giveaways and the first to know of other fun things that I do. It's free. It's linked in the description box below. And if you live in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area and you're looking for a transformation in your home, it doesn't necessarily need to be the closet, but that is my specialty. Send me an email. We could connect in real time. And next week, I'm going to be doing another closet transformation. Would you like a sneak peek of that closet? All right, here we go. I am so excited about this closet transformation. She is a brand new mama. She has a four month old baby. She is also a full-time working mama. She shares a closet with her husband, which I can relate to because I do that as well. I cannot wait to get in this closet, transform this space, and just lend a helping hand to her. If you want to keep the fun going here for another transformation that I did, click this video on screen now. Or if you want to see some amazing and smart home hacks, click this video. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you, my friend, in the next one.